Hi, welcome back to Portworx Lightboard Sessions. My name is Ryan Walner, and today we're going to be talking about how to run Apache Kafka on your Portworx and Kubernetes infrastructure. I have a number of things already laid out here, such as Autopilot, which we'll talk about the benefit of using Autopilot of Portworx with Apache Kafka. We have a Kubernetes cluster with the Portworx already installed across these five nodes. These are indicating that Portworx can run pretty much anywhere on the cloud, bare metal, or kind of scale out or scale up storage. We have a dev and test cluster, which will come into play about some of the benefits of data mobility when it comes to Portworx and Apache Kafka, and then some consumers and producers up here. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is how Kafka actually gets set up with Portworx on Kubernetes. So the, what you'll do first is deploy Kafka to your Kubernetes and Portworx cluster. So typically your Kafka instances will be deployed as either a stateful set or a deployment onto your Portworx and Kubernetes cluster. Uh, let's say that we have four brokers for this test and we have Zookeeper also deployed somewhere on our cluster. So the B will indicate broker for our Kafka broker. Now, each one of these brokers will get a Portworx volume. Portworx will provide the virtual storage volume to each broker through Kubernetes dynamic provisioning. Zookeeper can optionally use Portworx as well. We're gonna focus mostly on the brokers today. So keep in mind, these Portworx nodes will provide a globally available storage pool to create these virtual block devices out of, and the brokers can use these. And at this point, you have persistent storage for every broker, you have the brokers and zookeeper set up, and now your Kafka cluster technically can start creating topics and performing as it would on many other deployments. Something to keep in mind here now is that both Kafka and Portworx provide data replication. Kafka does this at sort of the topic partition level at the application layer, and Portworx does this at the storage block level. So you may be asking yourself, how do I configure both Kafka and Portworx appropriately for my use case? Well, it really depends on a number of different things. If you're familiar with sort of consistency, availability, and partition tolerance, CAP theorem, these are some of the things to take in into account. Also with Portworx and Kubernetes, you want to talk, think about the overall performance needs of your Kafka deployment, as well as sort of the recoverability and rebalance times you're willing to kind of sacrifice when it comes to replication at the storage layer in case you do have a physical uh, partition at the network or node level. And we'll talk a little bit about the failure at the node level with Kafka and Portworx doing replication. So what we're going to suggest is sort of a uh, great place to start, and it gives you the best of both worlds in terms of really good performance, as well as the best failure scenario uh, tolerance. And that would be uh, Kafka replication Kafka replication of two, and the Portworx replication of two. So this means that Kafka is going to replicate the partitions two times across the cl cluster at the application layer, and Portworx will do the same at the storage layer. So what does this actually look like? So let's say our uh, blue color here is uh, topic one, partition one and it's going to replicate that partition across both of these brokers, brokers one and two, we'll call them. That then gets put on the Portworx volume and therefore on the Portworx node down here. 
So now you may have another partition or another topic. We'll say it's partition number two. And it also lives on those two nodes. So now we have both of our partitions and the data is replicated twice at the cluster level and twice at the portworks level. So one of the interesting things now to consider is um, how failure would work in this cluster. So when it comes to pod or broker level failure, the broker will fail and Kubernetes will start that broker back up on another healthy node. And as long as it has a healthy replica, Portworx will be able to serve that replica even if the broker comes up on another node. So for instance, if this broker were to fail here and would come up on another server down here, these replicas can be served across that cluster somewhere else. So the availability of your partition data on this broker is now accessible somewhere else in the cluster. This helps with a number of different things, right? Uh, keep in mind that when a broker fails in a sort of non uh, Kubernetes or software defined uh, infrastructure, this broker that comes up online would have to rebuild its replicas from the rest of the cluster, from the healthy kind of in sync replicas that may be existing on the other brokers in the cluster. With Portworks, Portworks can make this node available, uh, replica available across the cluster, and therefore this broker won't have to actually rebuild all the data because Portworks holds it at the block level, not just at the host level, and it's not stuck on this host, right? If this were directly attached storage um, and this were data on an SSD, uh, you can't make the data available across the network unless you have some sort of uh, software defined or distributed storage. So Portworks does enable this for you. The other thing is at the node level, if Portworks were to hold, um, now it has, say, this broker now has both of these replicas over here. Um, and now um, this broker is already offline. Now say we lose a, a physical host. So say this Portworks node goes down. Now at the physical layer, if Portworks holds the replicas, so say that this node also had some of the replicas in this cluster. Well, now at the block level, we have one other copy of this uh, broker data. Portworks will try to actually make the broker distribute and reschedule back closest to the data locality that it would give. So we'll try to put this uh, broker on the same Portworx node as its replicas uh, and Stork, the storage orchestrator of Kubernetes component of Portworx does this. However, if there's another broker on here and you want a broker per node and the scheduling takes this into account, such as stateful sets or other mechanisms, it can put it on another healthy node such as this one and serve it over the network just like we saw before. Now, you may be asking, okay, but I did lose two replicas. These can't be served over the network because that's a physical failure, right? At the node or disk level. Well, Portworks can, after a certain time, say, okay, this node is gone for good. And what it'll do, it'll rebuild these replicas um, from a healthy replica back onto another healthy Portworx node. And so that actually takes uh, some time uh, and it depends on the configuration, but for Kafka, you may be able to configure this for an hour. If we lose this node for an entire hour, we can redo this and therefore rebalance the cluster. And so 
what you're getting and what you're seeing here is that uh, port works with multiple replicas at the storage level can handle physical failure at the cluster availability zone layer disk level for Kafka above it. And also Kafka doing its own replication has some uh, improved performance, uh, better uh, overall sort of uh, replica handling for uptime and availability for consumers and producers. So this is why you get the best of both worlds because if either Kafka had one replica or Portworx had one replica, uh, we wouldn't be able to handle nearly, nearly as much failure. Uh, and if Kafka or Portworx were doing three replicas, well, you'd have a lot more availability, but necessarily not the best performing Kafka cluster but you can uh, manipulate these to your liking. You may choose to do Kafka at three replicas and Portworx at one uh, to give you a more performing uh, Portworx cluster as well. So hopefully that gives you the benefit and understanding of how brokers will use Portworx virtual volumes and how failure can actually happen and Portworx can help aid in the overall mechanisms for recovery um, when you're not tied to physical disk and you're using a uh, software-defined storage layer like this. The other benefit here is that as these um, volumes start to get filled up and you have a lot of uh, producers pushing a lot of data, one thing you might run into is capacity planning. So typically you'd have to monitor these volumes and say, oh, you know, all these volumes are now at 90% capacity. I really need more storage. You may have to go provision more, or add more to your disks. Well, this is where autopilot comes into play. What it can do, it can monitor these dynamically and automatically increase the size of these PVC volumes based on the globally available storage pool space that Portworx has. So if these start to fill up, it will say, oh, I've reached the threshold and my rule that I have in my engine is to increase by 100%. So if this is a 10 gigabyte volume, it will increase by 100% of that volume to 20 gigabytes. So now we grow that space dynamically and automatically. So now by 100%, you're back down to underneath that 100% threshold automatically. Uh, nothing paged anyone. <laughs> no one got pinged to go ahead and run manual commands. Autopilot did the whole thing just by being installed on the cluster, being provided metrics with something like Prometheus, which is part of the installation for Portworx, and by creating a few rules. So this is one added benefit for the overall capacity planning that Kafka has with Portworx. Another great benefit is the data mobility. So say we wanted to run this in production and we had real data streaming through our system and we wanted to start testing or we saw a possible issue and we want an exact copy of what's going on in production. Well, if you allow Portworx to pair with another cluster, so say you have a dev cluster in a another cloud on-prem or even in public cloud, you can create what's called a cluster pair. And this essentially allows you to pair your production cluster with a dev test system or one-way movement of data. And when I say data, I mean Portworx allows you to move the broker data. So every single broker that's in the cluster and any volume that's in that cluster. So all the brokers and Zookeeper nodes, how they're defined, what the spec looks like, what the metadata is for those objects, as well as the data volumes and what's in them because Portworx volumes are virtual volumes. They can be copied. They can have smart snapshots saying that you can sync this data to disk or run a command before the snapshot occurs. And then what Portworx will do is move this entire unit as a mobile object. So this is application plus metadata mobility through cluster pairing and Portworx. So then what ultimately happens is you can bring this 
live system up on your dev system and instantiate the exact data and metadata that your production system was using. And this allows your uh, developers or test or QA pipelines to really dig into real production data uh, as it was occurring at the time in this production cluster. So just to recap what we're talking about here and sort of the initial key benefits of uh, Apache Kafka on Portworks using with Kubernetes is the overall uh, replication at the storage layer and application layer, how they can work together. This enables both application level and physical level uh, failure benefits, as well as the best of both worlds when it comes to data protection and availability and performance. Then we have autopilot capability, which is all about capacity management and automating that capacity management. And that's enabled when you run Kafka on Portworks by default when you have autopilot installed. And then the overall benefit of the data mobility and application metadata mobility of Kafka itself, of both metadata and data from one uh, application cluster to another. And this can be production to test as the example as we explored here. So that's the key benefits of running Apache Kafka on your Portworks by Pure Storage uh, infrastructure and deployment. I hope this was useful. And until next time, take care.